All right, guys, we are back. And today we're going to unbox this beauty. So let's get into it. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I got an overhead action four. I got you guys. I got my mic closer so I can talk into it. Let's unbox the Q3. I am so excited to get this thing. I had the Q2 for, oh, look at how the box just falls apart. I love that presentation. Boom, now I just, I had the Q2 at one point. I didn't respect the 28 millimeter focal length like I do today. Um, now let's open this part for you guys. Boom, boom. All right, I'll open this part. We'll, we'll take this out. All right, this is what I remember. There's like drawers. So I'll take this out, but like, as you can see right here, there's drawers. So we're gonna put the camera aside and we're gonna see what's in the drawers to start. All right, starting with the top drawer. You got your books, top drawer. Let's go to the second drawer. This is what I like about Leica. Look at that. Every single one of these devices is in a pouch, not plastic. There's no plastic in here. This is what you pay for, this kind of stuff. They, hand, they must hand tie these knots because this is absolutely crazy. All right, here we go. What's in the first bag? As we thought, like a battery charger. Second is the Leica strap. This is to keep it from scratching the eyelids or the side of the camera. So that's that. Set that aside. All right. Apparently it's just the cords, one US and one European. This feels like the protective ring. This is crazy. Like these have to be hand tied. There's no computer, no machine that's gonna tie these yep that is the protective ring i think this only goes on if you're not going to use the, the filter ring i'm sure this is the battery yep well that's all the things out of the boxes let's put all that stuff aside let's put all that stuff aside and then we can um look at the camera itself And there it is. And oh, just wrapped in plastic. Well, which makes sense. Oh, the hood's already on it. I like that. There it is, guys. There it is. There's the uh, tilty flippy screen that it has. Can't wait to try that. Oh man, this is nice. It's so much smaller. I, I always forget how small this thing is. Look at that, look how tiny that is. All right, let me get the stuff cleaned up and the battery put on and all that and then we'll go through some stuff. Stand by to stand by. We are filming, we are rolling, we got the uh, stuff to going. Okay, I got the Leica, the brand new Leica Q3. Well, brand new to me. These things are on back order forever. And after I got rid of my X106, I needed um, an upgrade and this is a considerable one for sure. I can't wait to get out and test it and make sure the face detect autofocus and all the things that come with it work. But for now, let's get into my initial impressions, overall build quality, just like the Q2 is amazing. I love this macro switch right here. Um, and I love this aperture ring, all metal design, very minimalistic aesthetic. I see they moved some buttons around. They added another button up here, it looks like. So I've been spending months going back and forth ever since uh, old mate from Java bought his M10R. It's gotten me um, the Leica bug. I caught the Leica bug again, and 
been going back and forth between the M10R, the M11P, and the Q3 for a few months now. Uh, and really for my needs, for what I want to do with street photography, I didn't think I needed um, the M system. I think uh, I think I would get old, get tired of manual, always manually focusing. I love manual focus lenses when I'm out doing street photography with my film camera and then sometimes with the CF. But I don't know if I want my everyday main driver to be always manual focus. That may change. That may change. I'm going to experiment some more with that. Uh, and I may end up getting an M, M system in addition to this. Uh, we shall see. We shall see. But I wanted something small, something I could travel with, something that was like the X106 uh, fixed, slim, fixed lens system. This being a 60 megapixel, you can crop in quite a bit and still get the shot. So it's like having multiple cameras in one. And, and we'll talk more about that. But um, I went into like a store, I played around with the M system, and to be honest with you, the, I didn't feel like the M system had this, the, the, the manual focus on this vintage 1970s Nikon FE, in my opinion, was much better than your manual focus on the Leica M system. The Leica M system uses this, uses this like almost like a ghosting thing where you got to line up the ghost with the actual image, and sometimes I had a hard time seeing it, especially in a complex scene, I couldn't find that, that area. Whereas this is like, it's like it takes your face and cuts it in half and you got to line your face up to make it work. And I feel like that type of system for me is just easier to focus with. So I wasn't sure about the M system because of that. And because of that, I went with the Q. It's just like such a basic camera. It's so weird. Well, I'll get into the detail or do the nitty gritty of this later. Let's just talk about my initial impressions. <laughs> I'm like going down the rabbit hole right now. So I had the Q2 in 2022. I absolutely loved the camera from its design standpoint, but 28 millimeter focal length I didn't find was just something I enjoyed too much. So because of that, I ended up getting rid of it, uh, sold it and uh, went back to using Fuji cameras. Regretted it pretty quick after, to be honest with you, but yeah, the damage was done. Uh, fast forward till today, uh, 28 millimeters is one of the most used focal lengths that I use um, on my ZF that I'm filming with today and the 18 millimeter on the X-T5 and X-H2, which is 27 millimeter focal length, full frame equivalent, close enough. So 28 millimeters is a jam for me. And with the croppability of the 61 megapixel sensor that's in this body, I don't, I think it's like one lens to rule them all. And, and I have another video on how I outgrew my introverted tendencies, so uh, give that a look if you don't mind. Okay, so enough, enough of me justifying the purchase of this. I don't really need to justify it to anybody. At the end of the day, I had to take this journey to find what I wanted to do in photography, and it took doing all these things, going through all these cameras, doing weddings, and doing portraits, and trying pro shoots, and doing a model shoot to just kind of hone in on what I really enjoyed out of photography, which was street photography. And I had to stop buying cameras that fit other genres that really didn't interest me as much. If I need to do a portrait session or a wedding, I got the cameras that can do it, but I don't need to buy portrait and wedding centric cameras because it's not something I do every day. I need to spend more time with street photography cameras, which is what I am using with the ZF, with the FE and with the Q3 as well. ZF, FE, Q3, all right. Um, I just like the manual dial experience that all three of these cameras offer. All right, so let's get into the initial impressions. Uh, I really, really like the presentation value that Leica has. Now, that's just the box. That doesn't really matter as much. Not as much as the device itself matters. So let's press on. Like I alluded to earlier, talking about this lens, this is an $8,000 lens. The 28 millimeter F1.7 Sumalux lens by itself on the M system is $8,000. This is the sensor that's in the M11P for all intents and purposes. And, you know, you combine that with the IBIS that it has now and the phase detect autofocus and the Sumilex 28 millimeter $8,000 lens. This is like a dream camera. And for the money, it's worth it just to get the lens. Um, it uses pixel bending similar to the cell phones use pixel binning on like the Google Pixel 8, 9 Pro, the iPhones, they all take 50 megapixel, pixel, they all take 50 megapixel sensors and they combine 
four pixels into one so that you can get more light gathering, more quality in a 12 megapixel photo. This uses pixel banning to give you that same, that higher quality in a lower megapixel count picture so you can save space. I don't plan on using that very much. I plan on using the full 61 megapixels and dealing with the space. That's why I have two terabyte, three terabyte, four terabyte hard drives. I want the crop ability and I want all the megapixels or all of it with the crop modes. There's crop lines that you can utilize to like uh, crop in at different focal lengths. And in doing so, uh, I have to refer to my chart here. It's like having an M11P and a 28, mil 28 millimeter Sumalux lens, which is basically the sensor lens combo on this full width. And also like having an M10R, uh, 35 millimeters, you have 39 megapixels of, of resolution. And then it's also like having an M9 because you have 19 megapixels at 50 millimeters. So using those frame lines and being able to crop in and still get a very usable image gives you like all of those great lenses without having the zoom issues that you would with sharpness. So anyhow, we'll see what happens in real world, real world testing, but uh, on paper, it seems amazing. It's water sealed, unlike the M lenses the m bodies are water sealed but the m lenses are not this is ip52 water and dust resistant so that allows me to be able to shoot on the streets in the rain and not really worry about it although i probably would anyway because this camera costs six thousand dollars it has in body image stabilization something something the m cameras do not have something i've been used to on the zf and the xt series and than all the other Nikon and, and Fuji cameras I've owned. And, um, you know, I think that'll be a great addition to have, especially if you're trying to crop in, you wanna get those sharp images so you can crop in. And then you can reduce the sharpness to make it look vintagey. That's just what we do. That's what we do as photographers. We reduce the clarity and sharpness after the fact, but we want the image to be as sharp as, as possible in camera. So, and when I do wanna manual focus, there's this nice button right here that I can press in and then release the autofocus and now I'm manually focusing. See that? That's simple, not a problem. Then I can push that button again, it locks again back in autofocus and bada bing bada boom. Want to go into macro mode? Here we go, boom, now we're in macro mode. It's that simple, it's just a flick of a wrist. Flick of a wrist. And as, as I've already talked about, the other, other initial impression pro that I've seen is this flip screen. I love this flip screen. It's gonna allow me to be able to get these low shots without having to get on my stomach like I used to when I had the Q2. Or when I use this camera right here, I, it doesn't have a screen at all. I have to get on my stomach. Having that flip screen is gonna allow me not to be, have to do that, so that's awesome. <sighs> Something else it has that I have harped on in a lot of videos that I wish Fuji would bring to their cameras is highlight weighted metering. And that's gonna allow me to expose for the highlights, bring up the shadows as needed, and ensure that I have a very, very clean photo and nothing is overexposed. So that's pretty cool. I'm glad it has that. I wish the Fuji bodies did, the Nikons do. And um, like I alluded to, the Fuji bodies are probably not gonna be here much longer now that I have this bad boy and the Nikon ZF again. Yeah, yeah, gas is real. Grass is not always green on the other side. I do believe that I have been crazy about buying cameras, but I'm starting to finally narrow down what I actually really like. We shall see, we shall see. Flip screen, highlight weighted metering, awesome. Phase detect autofocus. I already mentioned this before, but this bad boy has phase detect autofocus and contrast autofocus, which the Q2 only had contrast autofocus. So that's gonna allow this thing to be a lot more snappy with the autofocus. And let's just find out. I have not even tried. Oh yeah. Seems pretty, it's, it's a little lens breathing-ish, but it seems like it's getting it. Yeah, more testing is gonna be needed, but it has phase detect autofocus, so we shall see. And, and something I did not expect a Leica system like this to have is 8K video. Now, I'm not so sure I'm ever gonna use the 8K video. I'm, I'm not so sure that I'm ever gonna open this again after today to show you that because that, this is plastic. 
like, ah, this is probably the only thing that's plastic on this whole camera. I'm not a fan of that. Not a fan of that. Um, I wish that was a metal door like, you know, that one. <laughs> wow. Uh, so yeah, it has 8K video. And to be honest with you, even if I shot video on it, I'm going to use audio from an external source because it's going to be cleaner anyway. So I don't see myself using this at all. All right, so that is some of the, mo all the things that I liked about it initially, or like about it initially. Um, more testing's needed, so we're gonna see if they're gonna fulfill the specs on the page. Now the other reviews have told me it should, but more testing, we'll find out. I also wish this locked, by the way, this macro right here. So it does not, so it just moves freely. It does kind of stop in place, but That'll be easy to knock, so be careful when you're when you're using the, the macro. Things I do not like about the, the Q3 from my initial impressions. Um, it's got the same bad ergonomics, you know, no grip here, just a little bit of a thumb indention here. Now, is it hard to hold? No, no, it's not hard to hold. Do I wish it had better ergonomics? Yeah, I do wish it had better ergonomics. Um, but no, they want you to buy an external third, or not third party, an external first party grip that also allows you to wirelessly charge it. I still might buy it because I love the, the thought about wirelessly charging it, but at the same time, it's like $200 for the for the charging mechanism and I think $150 for the grip. It's astronomical, astronomical. The, the Nikon ZF I have, the small rig grip costs $39 and it's solid. There's no way you should spend $200 for a grip, $150 for a grip. That's, there's just no reason. I mean, are you hand carving the metal are you smelting it like a blacksmith in the Middle Ages? Like, no, there's no reason for that. That is absolutely ridiculous. You know, another thing uh, I do not like about it is the, it has one card slot. Now it would be, there looks like plenty of space here to put a second card slot. I don't know if making it this small made it difficult with the board, PC board and all the other stuff that's in here, the processor and whatnot. I this unit, all those things to maybe not be able to put it in there, but it would be nice to have a second card slot. Even if like the ZF, you did like a um, micro SD card slot, that'd have been nice. But nonetheless, we'll see if the one card slot comes back to bite me at any point in time. I did put a UHS-2 uh, SD card in there, um, unlike all my other cameras that have UHS-1 cards in them. Next thing I do not like about this is there's no ISO dial. There should be an ISO dial over here, just like on the M11P. Um, you've had enough time to refine that. There's plenty of space. I know you have the viewfinder over here, so maybe that's an issue, um, but it would have been nice. Now, as long as I can program this to be an ISO button, uh, that's all I really care about. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into that, I think I can. Another thing that I'm not pumped about is thermal management. Uh, it's very small camera, no fans, no external anything. It's all metal. It has a 30 minute record limit, which tells me that thermal management might not be as good as the ZF, which has unlimited cord, cord limit, unlimited cord limits, unlimited record limits or no record limits, if you will. And lastly, you know, it'd be nice if I had mic and headphone jacks. You're going to make put nice video in here, but you're really not going to add any video centric features. What's the point of that? I don't understand that. It's not a big deal. I buy, I bought this as a photo first camera. If it, I'm going to test the video, but I really care more about the photos it's gonna it's gonna make. I mean, all in all, they've improved quite a bit on this bad boy. Uh, it feels very light, very small still. It's got nice button placement. You can get to all the buttons with your right hand. Yeah, I cannot wait to use this. It's just top quality. I mean, I'm telling you, top quality articulating screen, the autofocus, the larger battery. I didn't even talk about that. They increased the battery capacity, but not the size of it. To, uh, that's awesome. So more shots. Uh, these batteries are like 200 something plus dollars each. So I don't want to have to buy another battery. It took me about three months of waiting to, for it to finally become available. It was available for about two hours and then it was gone. And, and, and I really got to tell you, I really got to tell you, don't buy this camera, honestly don't buy this camera there's so many better options out there so many better options you do not need this camera do not buy it it's 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 great don't get me wrong 
but you don't need it. You can do anything you want with the Nikon ZF, with the next T5, with the next H2, with the Panasonic S5 II, an A7 IV, a Nikon Z6 III, uh, Canon R5, R6. You do not need a $6,200 plus dollar camera to, do, to make great photos. I just wanted it. I just wanted it and and it was a present to myself. My birthday is in a couple of weeks and it was a present to myself and uh, I deserve it. So I got it. And the message that I'm trying to say at the end of the day is use what's going to help you get better photos, what's going to inspire you. As I talked about in my street photography POV video with the X-T5 and this Nikon FE, the FE really inspires me to shoot. This is going to inspire me to shoot. Um, these inspire me to get out there and whatever inspires you to get out there and shoot and and do work and put in the time that's all you need you don't need anything else this right here four hundred dollars this camera cost me this right here more than ten times that but i still would prefer this thing this the film camera over it i just love it does that mean i'm foreshadowing maybe an m6 in my future could be but for now, it's going to be this bad boy. Can't wait to, have to, wait to go out and shoot with it. Um, I continue to have gas. Gas continues to be a problem. Gear acquisition syndrome. But I buy and sell. I don't ever keep all these cameras. I'm just, let me be honest with you. I buy and sell. I love them all. But I can't see keeping more than a few around. One for filming. One for street photography. One for travel. Maybe one film camera. Okay, I have two film cameras. I forgot. I, I bought that Kodax half frame camera, but that's like a seventy dollar toy. It, that doesn't count. So, you know, I buy and sell cameras all the time. Uh, I don't keep all the cameras that I talk about on the channel because it's just too much. It's just too much stuff, and I do not like keeping that much stuff around. So, um, so for now, uh, I think the XH2 is on the chopping block. I really don't like taking that camera anywhere. It's really just a studio only camera. So I'm filming with the ZF today. ZF is more than capable of a camera. I'm gonna see if it's gonna be enough. And then the X-H2 might be on its way to MPB. And um, yeah, I'm gonna see how, how I like this bad boy. Yeah, as you can see, I'm obsessed with photography. Absolutely love it. And this isn't really a hobby for me. I, I think it's like a part of my life, you know? And for me, um, getting a bunch of cameras, trying them out, figuring out which ones I like, selling the ones that I think I can live without, that's fun and I enjoy it. So I guess I've come to the acceptance stage of gas. All right, guys, that's it for me. <sighs> I hope you have a good one. Thank you for watching. Look for more Q3 related stuff. Until next time, see ya. Peace.